mind-opening, entertaining, tense, and life-enriching. Those are the very few words that can describe novels that I'm going to share with you today. They will make you laugh, they will make you cry, they will make you rethink everything what you know about the life, but the most important, they will change you forever. My name is Vladislav Radak, I'm writer and mathematician. This is important because I use science to enrich novels that I write and I, you know, read books to inspire my scientific work. And right now we're on crossroads of our civilization where science and art are making the biggest impact. The pandemic made us rethink our existence and our future roles. Strange, once in a lifetime holidays are behind us and until the vaccine comes, we need to spend a bit more time isolated and rethink our future. As humanity, as an individual, as one with this planet. This is the perfect time for reading. Books are only mean of transportation to another world right now. They can be escape, a long-awaited holiday, a romance or unexpected beautiful adventure. Books I will recommend you today changed my life forever and some of them will certainly change yours. They made me a better novelist, a better scientist, a better friend, but above all, more compassionate human. Those books are considered absolute classics, transcending language, culture or era. And they are all works of fiction. Not that I have anything against non-fiction books, but there is something about this fragile ultimate truth that can be explained only by the fiction where reality and science cannot step forward. Welcome to The Fabric of Life, the show where we're trying to find this ultimate truth that lies between blurry lines of fiction and science. Let me take you on an adventure. But before we start with this amazing list, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Every week I'm taking you to amazing scientific and fictional adventure. Next week I'm taking you to Portugal in a search for the best writer to ever live. Without a particular order, the first on the list is Slaughterhouse 5 by American writer Kurt Vonnegut. Master of the shape of the stories, Vonnegut brings the story of a life and experiences as an American soldier and chaplain's assistant during Second World War with occasional time travel. According to Vonnegut, it took him 20 years to write Slaughterhouse 5, a novel that attempts to explain what the author himself experienced as a prisoner of war and witness to the destruction of Dresden. This novel is memorial to the ugliness of war, the violent oppression, to the civil rights movements, income inequality and armed conflicts as a whole. It is by far the best lesson in history ever written better than any historical book. It's a cautionary tale about all of us, about our mental health and about repeating mistakes of humanity. The next one is The Count of Monte Cristo, a novel by brilliant and egoistic French writer Alexandre Dumas, father, who probably had the help of his ghostwriter, Auguste Maquier. This absolute thrilling adventure about love and lust, wrongful imprisonment, escapes from jail, poverty, riches and revenge takes place in France, Italy and Mediterranean. This masterful novel is considered forerunner of the thriller genre. It inspired Hollywood we know today and blended the genius writing with a thrilling plot. But deep down this is a story about belief and persistence. This is a story about escaping our own jails and taking off the shackles of the time. And this is one of the greatest stories that deep down every writer tries somehow to rewrite again. The next novel is intriguing murder mystery wrapped in the surroundings of 14th century Italian monastery. The Name of the Rose is a novel by brilliant Italian professor and intellectual Umberto Eco that I had a chance to meet while I was promoting my second novel at the Frankfurt Book Fair. In this story, an eloquent and enlightened fratar and his faithful sidekick attempt to solve the mystery of the dying monks. They will encounter many historical, religious and ethical challenges along the way. Despite the historical setting, the themes of the name of the rose are very modern. The ongoing battle between religion and enlightenment dominates the narrative and its cautionary tale for the future of humanity. This masterful script 
is about philosophy of our emotions, about human history hidden in a language all wrapped in one amazing detective novel. It sold 50 million copies worldwide, making it one of the most complex reads to go fully mainstream. Going through our life and thinking about all possibilities that might have happened, we often go to those couple of hours that somehow changed our whole life narrative forever. That is the backdrop of unique 1997 debut novel The God of Small Things by Indian writer Arundhati Roj. It follows fraternal twins Raquel and Estefan when they were 7 years old, spanning for 23 years when the twins are reunited. It is the story about tragic death, infidelity and murder. This Booker Prize winner is rich and colorful language that brings India's blooming and complex culture and history to your fingerprints. It is one of those history lessons that you cannot find in history books because it examines morality, social norms, caste system and a dark and brutal colonial history. This novel will show you how hereditary system of privilege works, not only in India but in the whole world, how it shapes us, limits us and how without our will rights or destiny. When it was first published, The Color of Magic, a novel by English humorist and satirist Terry Pratchett, sold only 506 copies. That didn't stop him from writing additional 41 novels about the world in a form of a disc, sitting on a turtle's back, supported by the four elephants floating through the universe. The basic elements are there. Wizards, witches, the long-lost heir to the throne, dragons, the undead trolls, dwarves, goblins. I could go on, but what makes this cult stand out amongst other fantasy series is in the way which those elements are treated. Pratchett took delight on turning cliches on their heads, firstly joking with the genre, but ultimately with our own world and expectations from it. His prose is undoubtedly warm and human, gentle and fragile, creating one of the most fun characters in the whole world literature, death, he jokes about our own mortality. The first edition of 506 copies sold gave Pratchett courage to continue and push further. 85 million copies sold in 37 languages, Terry Pratchett reminds us that we should always believe in our own crazy ideas, even if they are about the world in the shape of the disc floating on the back of a giant turtle. When a city is hit by an epidemic of blindness that spares no one, a authority is confined to the blind to an empty hospital. But there is a criminal element holds everyone captive, stealing food rations and assaulting women. That is in the short premise of a brilliant, masterful drama that bleeds into a horror by Portuguese Nobel Prize winner José Saramago. This is the best literature can get when it comes to richness of the language, style and thickness of the plot. It's also a story about our own ongoing pandemic, about animalistic in all of us, about our hidden sexual desires and about ultimate cost of our freedom. Saramago tells his tale with humor and compassion and with an imagination that is boundless enough to conjure an impossible epidemic without losing sight of the needs of actual life, achieving that rare blend of magic and reality. This novel I reread the most in my life and I'm always gladly coming back to. This is also one of the works that inspired me to become writer myself. In the times where technology became not the only prevalent way of communication and work, but also entertainment and leisure, we often ask ourselves, will future generations have their whole childhood online, making their first friends in the video game and falling in love in the chat room? This is why all of us need Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, the classic by Mark Twain that undoubtedly brings the rebel escapism to all of us. 
This rather controversial novel with colorful language is the pilgrimage to childhood that we all wish for our kids. Still, it also opens up big debates about racism, social divide and how we understand the controversial literature in the modern era. Problematic, controversial, racist and vulgar. This book can open many wounds and hopefully motivate us to have a deep conversation with the kid inside us and hopefully later with our own offspring. Crime and Punishment is considered one of the most complex novels ever written and I would lie to you if I said that you could read it on your daily commute or just a couple of minutes before going to bed. This story about a poor Russian student committing an arguably worst crime of all written 150 years ago by Russian mastermind Fyodor Mikhailovich Dostoevsky examines individual depression, morals of the society and the consequences of internal struggle. Dostoevsky himself had a turbulent life, being prosecuted by the government for his radical ideas, exiled into a labor camp where his focus shifted towards spiritual concerns. This book, like no other, analyzes the corruption of the youth, uh, our own egoism, existence or non-existence of our own utopia, but in a thrilling fashion it reveals the true punishment for our main character Raskolnikov and possibility of his own redemption. Beloved by Pulitzer and Nobel Prize winner Toni Morrison is a brutal and brilliant prose about some of the darkest chapters of American involved's past. Beloved is inspired by true-life incident involving Margaret Garner, an escaped slave from Kentucky who fled to the Free State in 1856, but was captured in accordance with the Fugitive Slave Act. When US Marshals burst into a cabin where Garner and her husband had barricaded themselves, they found that she killed her two-year-old daughter and was attempting to kill her other children to spare them from being returned to slavery. In this must-read novel, Morrison discusses in detail motives that are unknown to all of us. Psychological effects of slavery, pain and pleasure, of believing in the supernatural and complex definitions of the manhood, frequently posed by the white race. Beloved is one of the few modern novels that brings pain to discussion table in dramatic yet beautiful prose. This book is inevitable read in the healing process in our divided society. And last but not least is The Handmaid's Tale, a 1985 dystopian novel by Canada's finest Margaret Atwood, a story that recaptured the audience since it was made into a brilliant Hulu's TV show. In this disturbing story, a radical political group takes power in a revolution and imposes sets of rules based on the Old Testament. The biggest change is the severe limitation of people's rights, especially those of women, who are not allowed to read, write, own property or handle money. Most significantly, women are deprived of control over their own reproductive functions. This novel, like no other, paints a picture of what will happen to our society where we see injustice and do nothing about it. Ignoring isn't the same as ignorance, she states in her beautiful prose, making a metaphor for our modern world. You have to work at it. So, how did you like my list? What would you add? Write in comments down below. What is the novel that changed your life forever that I didn't mention on this list? Maybe the next time we can compile a list that uh, you proposed. Let me know what are the novels that ultimately made you a better human. Subscribe, see you next week. Stay tuned and curious. And don't forget, libraries still exist. Hi there. Mind-opening, entertaining. Mind-opening, entertaining, life-enriching. Mind-opening, entertaining, life-enriching. Mind-opening, tense, entertaining and life-enriching. Those are the very few words that can describe the novels that I'm going to share with you today. They will make you laugh, they will make you cry, they will make you rethink everything you know about the life, but the most important, it will change. They will change you forever.